I'm gonna show you how to make this crazy textured scanline effect in a few very easy steps. So let's jump straight in. So this effect is taken from my most recent poster design called Motion Sensor, which is this one here. Now I'm gonna walk you through the visual effect on the image first, and then I'm gonna follow through with the text as well, just to show you the entire process for the poster. So first step, it's gonna be jumping into a new canvas. So we're gonna do File New. I'm gonna use 3840 by 4800 pixels, 300 resolution. So I'm gonna set my background to black, and then I'm gonna paste in my image. Now this image already has the kind of horizontal line aspect to it with this background. So that's why I thought the texture scan line would be applicable for it and it would work really well. So the first step I'm gonna do is add in a path blur to kind of create a flowing motion. So I'm just gonna shift this up slightly. Now come into filter, blur gallery, and path blur. Now using the path blur, you can click and drag on each of these points here to add the start and end point. And then if you click anywhere along the line, you're gonna add another point, which you can then create bends with. So I wanna bend it in the kind of direction that his back is aiming. So we're gonna follow down this arm into his upper back and then down this arm as well. From this point, I'm gonna extend the points to the end of the wrists. Just make sure that my bend is kind of along the right motion. I bring this slightly back down again. There we go. And now I can increase the speed here. I'm only gonna put it at 100 and I'm gonna leave everything else where it is. Now this is just to add some kind of motion so that the actual blur effects and the texture can be input in a kind of inconsistent way rather than just being standard horizontal lines. So now with our path blur added, we need to combine our layers together to then add the filters. So I'm gonna use Command, Option, Shift and E. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be Control, Alt, Shift and E. And I'm gonna make sure that this layer is now converted to a smart object. So what this layer is, is a combination of every visible layer into one flat layer. So if I was to hide everything else, this is now just one thing. With this selected, we're gonna come up to Filter, Filter Gallery. And you're gonna see as I set this to Fit in View, this is the effect that we're creating. Now this is combination of grain, note paper, and torn edges. These three together create this really cool, like fine and detailed, gritty scan line effect. And I love the aesthetic of it. When you pair it with the blur, it creates this kind of inconsistency. You see how it kind of like fades out across the edges of the figure. So let me just show you the values here. So on grain, which is gonna be the first selection to use, you're gonna find that in the texture folder just here. Make sure that your grain type is set on horizontal. Now this is a key bit because if I change this to regular, you lose a lot of the scanline effect. So make sure that's set to horizontal. You can copy these values if you want, but if you drag up the intensity and check play around a bit, you're gonna see, you're gonna get some really thick and heavy lines, or you can bring the intensity down and make them a lot more faint. So I'm gonna keep it where it is on 46. Play around with your contrast as well, and that's gonna separate your whites and black values. So I'm gonna keep my contrast quite low so that there's a good amount of either. And now on top of grain, you wanna press the plus button down here and add note paper. Note paper is in the sketch folder. So select this one here. Now, if you have note paper by itself, it's almost like creating a, an embossed effect and it adds texture across every color value. So it's a really good thing to pair when you're adding filters. So now we've got grain and note paper on, you can copy these values, but the image balance will hide and reveal again, the dark and light values. So you can play around with these and fine tune these when you've combined all of them and go from there. And the final one is torn edges. Now this is gonna make everything textured and black and white and give it that kind of like gritty grunge feature. So once again, image balance, you see when I play with this, this is gonna be the most crucial one. I'm gonna keep this quite high, keep the smoothness quite high because if I turn it down, it becomes a bit of a blurry mess. It's a cool effect by itself, but not what we're going for in this. And then once again, play with contrast, fine tune all these values and go for what you want. Now when I hit okay, you've got your finished textured scanline effect. So now with this, you can just add a texture overlay I'm gonna go back and add the text in and show you how I've implemented that as well. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so I've just hidden my filter layer and now I'm gonna paste in my text that I've used on my poster design. I've added this text in a text box at the bottom and I've just kind of adjusted the size based on title, subtitle and body text. With this sensor text, it's the same typeface as the motion, which is podium sharp. And then I've just kind of made it italic. I've kind of like shrunk it down vertically so that it's a bit more extended. It's kind of meant to look a bit like a reflection of the motion text based on the angle. And then I've added my logo up here. So just to kind of play around with the placement of this, I'm just gonna drag our image up. As long as you click and drag and you don't use transform tools, it's not gonna re-render the blur. So make sure you've got auto select off, select this layer and then just click and drag it. So I'm gonna move that to here. Now, just before reapplying the filter, I wanna add a slight blur on all of the type assets so that it also has that scanline effect on it. So I need to filter this by the size of the text. So motion and sensor are the two biggest words. So I'm gonna group these together and name this large and then sensor and the logo are smaller. So I'm gonna name that small. Now the reason is because we wanna add two different blur values so that you can still read everything individually. So I'm gonna duplicate this large folder and convert this to a smart object and then hide the original. I'm gonna do the same with the small. Now if I just hide the small for the time being, on large, I'm gonna come onto this. I'm gonna go up to filter, blur, and motion blur. I'm gonna make sure the angle is zero. And I'm gonna set the distance to 40 pixels. Now this is just gonna blur it horizontally either side and add a little bit more fine detail for when we come back to adding the filters. 
then reveal your small text, filter, motion blur, and then this distance I'm gonna put on 15. I need it at a point where I can still read this text down here. So maybe a little bit lower at 12, there we go. Now I can just collapse this folder and repeat the same step. Command, Option, Shift and E, or Control, Alt, Shift and E. I'm gonna convert this to a smart object and name it Filter. Now you would just go back into your filter gallery and reapply the same values, but a little trick you can do is you can drag smart filters from one layer to another. So you could just click and drag it like that, but I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna hold Option and click and drag it, and it's gonna copy the same filters onto this filter layer. And now we've got this fully made poster design with a kind of universal scanline effect going the whole way across everything, which is perfect. Now I'm just gonna add some texture overlays to finish this. So I'm gonna add in a copy scan texture from Black Market. I'm gonna set this horizontally and vertically aligned. And now if you just look at the texture by itself, it's got this beautiful photocopy scan lines and this gritty grunge texture. I'm gonna set this to screen because we've got a dark background. Now this is gonna make everything a lot lighter and a lot more gray. So we're gonna turn the opacity right down to 30 and it's just gonna be a bit more of a subtle overlay. So if I hide and reveal it, it's gonna just lighten up the dark values a little bit and give them some texture. As well as that, I'm gonna add a noise layer from my actions. So I'm gonna press play on this and it's adding this live noise layer. So I'm just gonna come into the camera raw filter, which is how I've made it. And you're gonna see in this effects panel, we've got grain added down here. If you want to make it manually, you can add in a solid color fill with the hex code 808080 and then add this grain from the camera raw filter. So I'm gonna make this size and roughness, sorry, a bit bigger. Set the size to 50, then press OK. And now what you wanna do is set this layer mode to overlay and it's gonna reply. Now this is gonna be very subtle because we've just got dark and light values at the moment. But as I hide and reveal it, you're gonna see a little bit more fine detail come out. So I'm just gonna group these texture layers, just name this texture. And the last thing I'm gonna do if you wanted to play around with colors is add a gradient map. So select your filter layer, come down to adjustments and gradient map. Now from here, make sure you've got the icon selected, come onto your gradient editor, and then you can just cycle through whatever gradient maps you have and you can just explore different colorways that you haven't seen before. It's gonna just open up options that you wouldn't afford to do manually, which is what I love about using gradient maps. I'm gonna come into my duotone selection and just cycle through these. I think the pink one's really cool. I think ideally a darker background looks better with this because you see a lot more of the motion, but you can play around with the contrast by dragging the sliders in, make it a bit harsher and reveal more of those scan lines. Yeah, you have endless options here to play around with. That's a really cool option as well. And there we go, that is the final poster design and final photocopy scanline effect. Now guys, as always, thank you for making it until the end of the video. I really do appreciate it and I hope I can help you out. Now I'm gonna have two videos either side of me just here that you should check out. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you over there. <laughs>